Good morning, students. Today we will start clinical kinetics. In that chapter, in the first video, we have seen certain important topics. Now we are going to see the integrated rate law. Uh, depending on the integrated rate law, we are going to derive the rate constant for first order and then zero order and then half life period. So, called derivation and the collision theory we are going to see in this video. Let us start with the first order rate constant derivation. So, this is the integrated rate law for the first order rate constant. We know A gives product. This is general reaction. So, for this rate of the reaction according to rate law is K into A power 1. So, N is 1 here since it is a first order reaction. So, minus of dA by dt is called as rate. We know that. So, minus of dA by dt is nothing but K into A power 1. So, now I am going to integrate this equation. So, minus of dA by dt is equal to K into dt. So, now within the limits we are going to integrate this A0 and A for the concentration and for T, 0 to T is the limit. So, A0 to A if you uh, integrate A0 here A and then 0 to T. So, what we get? D of A by A is nothing but long A. So, minus long A, A naught A is equal to K into T. So, once again we substitute the value for T here and A naught and A. We are able to get the expression like this. Long of A naught by A is equal to K into T. So, once again I am going to take a log. So, instead of long, if you want to use log means you have to multiply by 2.303. So, 2.393 log A0 by A is equal to K into T. But we want only K. It is the rate constant for first order reaction. So, 2.303 log A0 by A must be divided by T. So, 2.303 by T log of A0 by A is nothing but our K value. So, this is the rate constant for first order reaction. Okay. And once again I am getting the same reaction here. Because I am going to draw a plot for the graph. We need a straight line equation like y is equal to mx plus c. So once again I am going to this step. So long a naught minus long a is equal to kt. So what is long a minus kt plus long a naught. Now this equation is in the form of the equation of straight line. Y is equal to mx plus c. So uh, this is y axis and here we are taking uh, t along the x axis. And the slope value gives the negative slope that is minus k. So if you draw a plot like this, so here we get a long a inside, and then here we keep us a time minutes, and we are able to get a straight line. And this negative slope will give the rate value for uh, this uh, straight line. This m is nothing but minus k. That is the rate constant. So that's all about the derivation for the first order rate constant. Next we move on to the zero order rate constant. This is for zero order. So zero order means rate depends on k into a power zero. According to the rate expression, you have derived uh, n value is zero here. So minus dA by dt is nothing but anything power zero is one. So we are able to get k and we are going to integrate this. So I am bringing uh, dt this side, k into dt. So now once again integration between the limits a naught to a and 0 to t here we end up the expression like this a naught minus a is equal to k into t but we want only k. So bring this t here. So this is the expression for k that is for zero order reaction. This is for zero order reaction. k is nothing but a naught minus a by t. Okay once again you take this expression and uh, make it as a uh, equation of a straight line y is equal to mx plus c once again we are able to get a c intercept and a negative slope for this also so this is for zero order reaction and this is for first order reaction thus we can uh, uh, derive the theoretically we can derive the rate constant value for first order and second order reaction is there we determine this rate constant experimentally means yes we can do it also by using pH measurement or conductance, change in conductance value we can measure or change in optical activity we can measure. In that way also we can find out the rate constant for first order and uh, zero order reactions. So example of zero order reaction and first order reaction they can be asked in three more questions. So let me first say about the example of first order reaction. 
It's a decomposition reaction of hydrogen peroxide. H2O to decomposition reaction, then N2O5 decomposition reaction, and thionyl chloride decomposition reaction. These three reactions are given in our book uh, for example in the uh, first order reaction. And apart from that, all radioactive transformation follow first order kinetic only. So wherever you come across any radioactive transformation reaction, the term will hold good only for first order reaction. And for zero order reactions, it will be as a written here. It is a photochemical reaction. In presence of light, hydrogen and chlorine combines to form 2HCl and in presence of platinum, N2O uh, gives rise to N2 plus half O2 and this is ionization reaction, CH3CO, CH3, that is um, acetone reacts with iron in presence of acid medium, we are able to get this reaction. But in this reaction, how it is zero order is with respect to iodine. So the rate depends only on acetone and acid. It does not depend on iodine. So here the, the rate of the order of the reaction is zero order with respect to iodine. Okay, this is the these are the example for zero order reactions. So so far we have seen the examples of first order and the second order reactions and of course the rate constant for first order and second order reaction. Let me proceed now half life period for first order and second order reaction. Before going into the derivation for half life we must know what you mean by half life of the reaction. Half life is nothing but the time required for any reactant to reduce it into the half of its value. So time required if you say for example if I take 100 moles at the beginning so it will be reduced to 50 moles means that is the half life period. So what is the time taken from a mole, uh, from a reactant starting from 100 mole it will become a 50 moles. So that time taken period is called as half life. Now k is equal to 2 pi v naught by t log of v naught by a is the rate constant we derive for first order reaction from this equation. Hope you all know. So now in this uh, rate constant equation for arriving at the half life we are making t as t half and A as A naught by 2. That is the initial concentration as A naught by 2 and the time as T half. Okay. So here T, T half and here A is substituted by uh, A naught by 2. A naught by 2. So 2 will come up. So A naught, A naught get cancelled. So log 2 value is nothing but 0 0.310. So multiply you are able to get 0 0.6932 by A. So this is a very important uh, expression and the uh, formula for calculating the half life period for first order reaction. And in this expression, how to know one more point also, this half life does not depend on the initial concentration of the reactor. Whereas other half life will definitely depend on the initial concentration, but here alone, T half does not depend on the initial concentration of the reactant. Now, that is it's all about the uh, half life of first order reaction. Next, we move on to the half life of zero order reaction. So, for the zero order expression, we take K is equal to A naught minus A by T. I'm taking here. And we are going to substitute T as T half and A as A naught by 2 once again. So, we are able to get T half as A naught by 2K. So, here I uh, can uh, see the difference between these two T half. It depends on initial concentration, whereas here half life does not depend on the initial concentration. There is a difference between zero order and first order reaction. Generally, if you want to find out the half for any order, nth order reaction, that n does not be 1. Always, so because for first order, this is the uh, expression for T half. For others, we can substitute this formula 2 power n minus 1 minus 1 by n minus 1 into k a naught power n minus 1. So that's all about the half-life period of both the zero order and first order reaction. Next we move on to the important concept, that is the last final concept we are going to see in this unit, that is the collision theory. So collision theory was first put forward by Max Trotz and William Lewis in the year 1916 and 1918 independently. And second point is this collision theory based on kinetic theory of gases. So this collision theory is 100% uh, based on kinetic theory of gases only and we are going to consider the rate of the reaction. Here also the rate of the reaction depends on how effective collisions are there between the colliding molecules. So let us consider two molecules A2 plus B2 combined to give two EB. So we are the reactant molecules and we are the product molecules. We are seeing one more point also, one collision occurs in every 10 power minus second. So is it possible? Is it 
faster means the reaction will end up in 10 power minus 9 second but it does not occur. So one more factor must also be adhering to them. So what is that one more factor is all the molecules that, work, that are involved in collision may not be an effective collision. So we are in seek of effective collision. Number two, all the molecules that are involved in, uh, in this chemical reaction must possess the minimum energy that is called as the activation energy Ea. Okay, so these two points are very important. Number one, collision rate as I mentioned. Collision rate is nothing but it is directly proportional to the initial concentration of the reactant particles. So I am removing this proportionality constant and make it as a constant. So eject is nothing but a constant. Collision rate, usually we will follow only rate after the, right, after the equation. But now we are considering as a collision rate. Collision rate is nothing but the rate at, uh, at which the effective collisions are occurring per liter in one second. Per liter in one second. And next we want a fraction of effective collision. As I told you already, after uh, finding out the collision rate, we must know the fraction of effective collision. That effective collision must have a uh, minimum energy that is called as the sole energy is called as minus Ea by Rt. Consider this graph. This is a potential energy versus reaction progress. They are the reactant molecule and they are the product molecule. So, this reactant is converted into product means it has to cross the barrier called the Ea. Are you able to see here? This is the energy of activation. So, each and every colliding molecules must possess a threshold energy, minimum energy that is called as the activation energy Ea. And now, next point is this uh, pollution if uh, Ea is considered at 100 kJ per mole and R 8.314 and temperature as 300 Kelvin, if you calculate, you will end up with E power minus 40 as the answer. So, E power minus 40 means 4 into 10 power minus 18. That is for every 10 power 18 collisions, only 4 collisions are effective. Okay? I repeat, for every 10 power 18 collisions, only 4 collisions are effective. So, this uh, uh, fraction of uh, effective collision factor is also reduced one more point to your orientation factor. So, apart from the collision rate and then the collision factor, we will have one more factor called orientation factor. This orientation factor it helps to the formation of transition state. Transition state is always called as activated complex. Activated complex is nothing but the intermediate between the reactant and the product. So formation of the transition state is the orientation factor. Orientation factor affects this. This orientation factor is otherwise called a steric factor also which can be denoted as P. Okay. So let me uh, show you the orientation factor. There are two chances. Now observe this board clearly. This is the A molecule and they are the B molecule. So orientation factor is like that. When they touch each other, you will get a product molecule like when they collide each other. So effective collision occurs here and you are end up with the suitable products here. But here consider AA and the orientation is like this. Here the orientation is like this. Here the orientation is like that. So AA and then BB once again will give only the reactant molecules here. You won't get the product. So you are able to get once again the reactant A and B. So this is not our effective orientation. So this is alone is the effective orientation. That also plays an important role. So rate now depend on all these three factors starting from steric factor and then effective collision factor and then collision rate. So steric factor or the orientation factor is denoted as P into F into collision rate. P of course you can use it as P as F. Bring that formula E power minus Ea by Rt. Collision rate bring this formula. So this is you consider as a formula 1, formula 2. So substitute here formula 1, formula 2 into P. So here rate is equal to K into A2 into B2. So what is K? All the other factors like P, Z, E power minus Ea by Rt is considered as K here. So rate depends on K into A2 into B2. This is the collision theory put forward by Max Cross and William Lewis. And the last point we are going to discuss is about the factors affecting the rate constant. So there are totally five factors which affect the rate constant. It is discussed in our book. Number one, nature or nature of the reactant or the state of the reactant. Number two, concentration of the reactant. Number three, temperature of the reactant. Number four, catalyst used in the reaction. Number five, surface area of the reactant. These are the factors which affect the rate of the reaction. Let us see one by one. Nature and the state of the reaction. Nature of the reactant. If the nature of the reactant is gaseous phase means number of molecules colliding will be more and therefore effective uh, rate of the reaction will be increased. 
And uh, uh, one more thing also, in doing our redox titration in our lab, we can see we will use uh, potassium permanganate only, but in one case we will use FAS, ferrous ammonium sulfate, in other case we will use uh, oxalic acid. Which one is um, occurring so fast and the rate of the reaction is more means uh, in FAS uh, solution only. For oxalic acid we must uh, heat and use, that is for 60 degree, at 60 degrees Celsius we have to heat. So depending upon the nature, the rate will affect. So rate of the reaction depends upon the nature and also state, whether it lies in the solid state or liquid state or in the vapor state. That also I can give you one more example, sodium and iodine. So when it, they react, uh, you will get sodium iodine. But iodine, when it, in the form of vapor, if you take the reactions, that is the rate of the reaction is so fast. So that is uh, what the nature of the reaction. And then concentration of the reaction. Concentration is... If you increase the concentration, that's number of moles is going on increasing means more number of molecules will get collision. So automatically rate of the reaction will be increased. Temperature, that only we saw under Arrhenius concept. For every 10 degree rise in temperature, the rate of the reaction is going to be double. You have seen already. And then catalyst. Catalyst definitely with catalyst and without catalyst, the complete finish. So with catalyst, this is your EA uh, means without uh, with catalyst, this is your EA means without catalyst, this is your EA. So see the rate of the reaction. Which one will be more now? This one will be. Because with the catalyst, there is uh, EA will be reduced. Without catalyst, the EA will be more. So this is the height. So that is the use of using catalyst in during any chemical reaction. And the last point is surface area. Surface area is also affecting more. Say for example, calcium carbonate marble is there. Uh, that is going to react with HCl or calcium carbonate powder you can take that is reacting with the HCl. In each case, uh, which case will be the more, uh, that is the rate will be more means only in the powder form. So if you powder the calcium carbonate, the surface area will be more. So what happened, more uh, number of molecules will be colliding and uh, get at atmosphere absorbed also. You can uh, give one more example, in Taj Mahal also calcium carbonate is in the form of marble. So acid rain is there. So uh, it took uh, so many years. Now only it is corroded. Okay, so many years are there. If it is in the powder formings, immediately when acid rain is formed, the Taj Mahal will spoil. That is about the surface area. Or even if this chalk is, if you, this is the surface, if I keep the chalk is like this, this is the surface area. Okay, so what about the rate of the reaction? Uh, if, if any colliding molecules like oxygen or hydrogen, whatever it collides, this much chance only is there for the surface area. If I powder this same chalk piece, so that I am spreading this chalk piece means up to this we can powder and we can spread. So increase the surface area up to this. So what happened? There is a more number of oxygen molecule or nitrogen molecule, whatever it is there in the atmosphere, come and get and collide with this uh, oxygen, uh, with this uh, chalk, that is calcium carbonate. So, uh, reaction rate is increased. So definitely these are the five important factors that affect the rate of the reaction. So apart from this we must know certain uh, simple formula like T half uh, and then uh, two more formula so we can have T uh, 75 percentage is nothing but 2 into T 50 percentage. This uh, will come across in many problem and then T 99.9 percentage is equal to 2 into T half. 2 into T half. This also you come across in many problems like that. And then in how many half like this? Amount of uh, radioactive species left after n half life. Uh, amount amount uh, left after n half life is given by the formula 2 by a power, sorry, a naught by 2 power n. 2 power n. Where n is the half life. Number of half life. So number of conflict. Okay. So these are the various uh, formulas you can use in this chapter for the uh, for uh, solving some certain problems also. Solve the chemical Thank you.